Okay. So this is, uh, we're looking at the, at the second chapter, the yoga of wisdom. And again, we got to keep in mind that yoga is way vaster than just simply coming to a yoga mat and doing stretches. It's way more than that. It's, there's really some, some deep stuff in here that if we can apply it at any moment in our life, it will bring benefit to us. And, it, and these things that I'm mentioning here today are what constitute yoga. So this, this sloka, this uh, short saying, it's number 41 in the second chapter. And it reads, if your mind is unsteady and wandering, many branched and endless are the thoughts and choices. When your mind is clear and one pointed, there is only one decision. I, I read this, I, I just get shivers when I, when I, as I reflect on this statement. If your mind is unsteady and wandering, many branched and endless are the thoughts and choices. We are inundated with choices in our world. Go to a grocery store and you can buy a million different kinds of the same thing, right? Or go online and you can get a million choices of what you wanna look at. And these choices, having so many choices like that actually creates unsteadiness in the mind. But having all those choices isn't the problem as much as keeping our focus on what we want, getting clear, getting clearer on what it is that we want. And this, can, this has all kinds of range. It doesn't have to be simply spiritual pursuit. It could be health. It could be love. It could be money. Uh, you know, I don't generally like to think about those things as part of yoga practice, but every, all of that, whatever it is that we want, if we want it, this is saying, if we, whatever it is that we want, if we keep a single pointed attention on that without getting distracted by other things, then it's very clear what we need to do. There will only be one decision to make rather than a million decisions. And a sign that we're wavering is when we see a multitude of choices and we can't kind of fix on one line. I'll tell you what, just to be honest, I get, I get like that. I get really <laughs> unsteady and then I, I notice all the choices before me and I get overwhelmed. And so that's why I do this practice. You know, I'm not, I'm not immune from an unsteady mind. But this, this, this passage makes it clear the direction that we need to go. When the mind is unsteady, well, wait, check, check it out. See, are, are you inundated with choices? Can you not, why can't you decide? Just one thing. I, mean, I don't want to be, it sounds kind of harsh. Why can't you decide? I don't want to say it like that. That's actually not, um, that's not a very compassionate way to think about it because sometimes there are some really difficult choices that we have to make. But I know that when I, when my mind is focused, it's clear what I need to do. That's just like what I've noticed through my own experience. And when my mind is not focused, the choices can become overwhelming. And so through the Hatha yoga practice, moving our body, focusing it, bringing everything back into our physical body, we, we attain that one pointedness of mind. In the yogic tradition, this is called a sankalpa, creating or cultivating a sankalpa, a, 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 a firm resolve for whatever it is that you want, firm resolve. In the Zen tradition, it's called cultivating Hotsubo Daishin, or the mind that seeks enlightenment. So we have to start out with that, from that place. Whatever it is that we're doing, doesn't matter what we're doing, but whatever it is that we're doing, if we can bring that, that, that Hotsubo Daishin, that Sankalpa, that strong resolve to it, and just focus on what we're doing, it's going to lead to good results. You're going to get the results you're looking for. And that's incredibly positive. 
And so let's just take it into this particular integral yoga class, right? Just this class, focus on this completely, forget about everything else for the time being, and see what the results are. You find out for yourself, all right? See if you can at least generate that sense of, I'm going to do this. I don't forget about all the other distractions around me right now. I'm just going to do this, okay? So let's start by bringing some attention to our breathing and following our breath. See if you can follow your breath all the way out, all the way in. Developing that concentrated mind. Okay, let's begin slowly now to begin to loosen up our, our physical body. And you know, maybe starting with the top of our body. So beginning with our head, just beginning to roll our head a little bit. But maintaining that sense of focus. So we're beginning to roll the head a little bit in either direction. And then continue to move into the down into the shoulders and rolling the shoulders a little bit. Rolling the shoulders in either direction. And then continuing down into our into our back and doing a seated version of cat cow. So rounding the back and then going forward. So just kind of shifting the center of the spine forward and backward. We're beginning to loosen, loosen our mind a little bit. All right, so we're actually doing the opposite of holding on, we're letting go. So sometimes holding on can bring concentration and sometimes letting go, ironically, can also bring concentration. So we're practicing releasing Releasing our concentration, letting go of our concentration, letting go of our sankalpa, letting go of our search for enlightenment. So release it. Okay, and let's move into making some circles. So circling our, our spine around our legs. So really circling from the low back, low spine. Letting go of seeking, letting go of awakening, letting it go of the results of our action, having no expectations, these very important points. If we can really let go, you might find that your concentration increases, ironic, kind of almost paradoxically. We think sometimes if we only hold on, grasp harder, then we'll get what we want. However, there's another side of that. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay, let's, uh, let's make our way to the front of our mat for some sun salutes.
So go ahead and find your way to Tadasana, to mountain pose. And begin to become more aware of standing. Becoming more aware of standing. Notice sensation throughout the body. We have to keep in mind we are, we are like a more, more like a flame than a solid thing. This body of ours is more like a flame than a solid thing. And if we can use our eyes, shift our perception to see, then we have a totally different experience here in Tadasana, being still. Being still is not being still. Okay, let's join the palms together. Extending forward and up. Little back bend here and fold forward. And step the left foot back. Hands come down to the mat, lifting the chin. Breathe. Step the right foot back. Drawing the heels down. Locking the heels in place, either one. It's almost like you, there's a pole lifting your hips up and back. Draw the head between the arms, looking back at the toes. Lower the knees down, engage the core, and engage your shoulders. Elbows squeeze together as you lower down onto your abdomen. Exhale fully. On the inhale, lift up, peel up like a snake. Peel the rib cage off of the ground. Maybe feeling your abdomen a little bit on the ground, your pelvic bone. And then lifting the tailbone up, coming back to downward dog. Okay, let's step the left foot forward. Hold here. And step the right foot forward. Exhale fully. Let's bring the hands to the shins or to the floor. You can lengthen out the back, lift the head if you want. Okay, when you're ready, lift the arms up overhead. Inhale up and breathe. Breathe normal. And exhale the hands back to the sides. Bring the palms together in front of the heart to close. Find that fire, find that flame. Seeing the body not as solid. All right, when you're ready, inhale up, exhale, fold forward. Moving a little faster here, inhale the right foot back, exhale the left foot back. Lower down knees, chest, and chin. Exhale fully, inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale the right foot forward. Exhale the left foot forward. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Exhale, palms together in front of the heart. And rest. If you need to go through this a little slower, go ahead. Feel free to. Let's find our spine, draw the shoulders back and down. Keep the shoulder blades in the back. Okay, palms together in front of the heart. Inhale up. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale the left foot back. Exhale the right foot back. Lower down knees, chest and chin. Exhale fully. Inhale, upward dog or cobra. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale the left foot forward. Exhale the right foot forward. Inhale the arms up overhead. And exhale, palms together in front of the heart. Remember in this practice, we've got to consciously love ourselves as we move our body. This body is wonderful. We can, we can love it and we can hate it. And we, we sometimes feel one way or the other about it. But with Hatha Yoga, it's the practice of loving ourselves, loving our, our physical body, loving our mind, just as it is. Okay, let's do two more sun salutations, continue to warm ourselves up a little bit. Okay, palms together in front of the heart. Inhale up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale the right foot back. Exhale the left foot back. Lower down knees, chest and chin. Exhale fully. Peel up for cobra. And exhale for downward dog. Right foot forward, inhale. And left foot forward, exhale. Inhale the arms up. And palms together in front of the heart. Okay, last one. Inhale up. Exhale, fold forward. Left foot back, inhale. Right foot back, exhale. Lower down, knees, chest, chin. Exhale fully. Elbows close to the body. Toes pointed, legs together. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale to downward dog. And left foot forward. Inhale, right foot forward, exhale. Arms overhead, inhale. And palms together, exhale. And rest. Let's find Tadasana. Shoulders, shoulder blades in the back. What happens when you bring your shoulder blades in your back? You might find your shoulders externally rotating a little bit, coming down a little bit. Let's try chair, bending the knees, chair pose, sweep the arms up, shoulder height or over the head. Bend the knees, pause here, breathe. Feel that heat in the body rising as we sit here in shoulder stand and in, in uh, chair pose. Feel that heat. Kind of putting the weight into the heels rather than the balls of the feet. And five, four, three, keep still. Two, one, and let's rise up. See how your body's feeling? Breathe. Okay, let's step left foot forward, right foot back for warrior two. So turning that right hip back, left hip comes forward, opening the left hip. You can put your left hand on your left thigh and just kind of press it open a little bit. Arms come right over the legs. And hold. Bend that knee. Bend the left knee if you need to straighten it and then bend it just to feel that. Arms are like being, are like two ropes pulling your arms apart in opposite directions. Feel that pull in the midline of the body. And hold. Maybe bend a little deeper in your left knee. Squeeze the thighs together. Squeeze your thighs together. Okay. 
Okay, lower the arms down, straighten the left leg. Step the right foot forward together with the left. Rest. Notice any changes in your body. All right, let's try the other side. Right foot forward, left foot back. Opening the right hip a little bit. Left hip comes back. Arms over the legs. Squeeze the thighs together. And breathe. Bend the right knee. Maybe bending a little bit more. Working towards parallel. Working towards making your thigh parallel to the mat. Breathe evenly. Notice the arms. Stay in your body. Stay here. Stay focused. Remember your sankalpa. Remember that deep resolve. Cultivating that commitment. Staying focused. Okay, let's lower the arms, straighten the leg, bring them together. Rest. So really the path, the yogic path and the Zen path are, are, are so similar. What I notice here is we, we tighten our grip and then we loosen our grip. We tighten it and loosen it, tighten it, loosen it. That's practice, that's practice. There's effort and then there's the release. We, we see the results of our actions immediately. Okay, let's try triangle. So side angle, a, tri a triangle is a side stretch. Right foot forward, left foot back. Arms over the legs, instead of bending that right knee, keeping it straight, reach the right arm forward. See if you can keep your arms parallel at this point to the floor. See if you can keep your arms parallel. And then as a piece, right arm comes down, left arm comes up. Find a comfortable spot for your neck to be. Drawing the right shoulder a little bit forward, left shoulder a little bit back. Breathe evenly. And slowly, as a piece, begin to lift the entire torso up as a piece. Lower the arms down as the head is up. Let's rotate the feet to the opposite way. So focusing on the left side now, arms come up. Reaching forward, little micro bend in the left knee. As a piece, left arm comes out, right arm comes up. And breathe. All right, as a piece, coming back up. Lower the arms. Let's bring the legs back together and rest. Breathe evenly. Okay, let's try side angle. So this one's a little bit... Um, Similar to triangle, right foot forward, left foot back, except this time we're gonna bend our right knee like in warrior. You can bring your left, uh, your right elbow to your thigh or maybe down to the, to the mat. 
Left arm comes up and over your head. Feel that stretch in the left side. Breathe. Look up towards your left, your left hand. Okay, when you're ready, slowly lower the left hand back down. Begin to straighten the right leg, lifting the head, lifting the back up slowly. And let's turn the foot in, the right foot and left foot out. Same thing, other side, left, left knee bends. Left elbow to the thigh or the hand can come down to the floor. Maybe your ankle, right arm overhead. Looking towards your fingers on your right hand, if possible. Okay, when you're ready, slowly begin to rise back up with control, with balance. Feet come back together, rest. Let's start doing some back bends. The first back bend is with a, um, is also a balancing pose. So this is King Dancer. And I invite you, if you have a strap or um, a towel, you could use that if you want. So one way to do this is to just take your right foot in your right hand. Okay, just coming into the pose that way. Another way is to use a, use a belt or use a towel, wrap it around your foot, and then come over your head with your hands. This is kind of fun. It makes a nice back bend here. So it requires some balance. I'm breathing into the, well, just breathing into the front side here. Some people are so, um, have such, Flexibility in their back, they can actually grab their foot with their arms over their head. I am not one of them. But some people can actually do that. Okay, let's uh, slowly release the leg. Come back to standing. So in this, in this back bend, we wanna make sure our core is engaged. So let's make sure we do the other leg. That we find that to be the case. So grabbing your left foot, pushing your foot into your hand, right hand comes for balance. Or again, if you want to use a belt or towel around that foot, and lifting the arms up over the head and pushing the foot into the, into the strap. Breathe here. Okay, and when you're ready, make your way back to mountain pose. Okay, let's come down onto our back. Come on down to your back, rest in Savasana. Savasana is said to be the most difficult of the poses. 
But if our mind is firm and clear, and when it's time to rest, then we just rest. Practice becomes easier the more we are clear and we have that firm resolve. Practice becomes easier once we have that firm resolve established. We can lose that firm resolve at any moment, but when it's there, practice is at its easiest. Okay, when you're ready, go ahead and roll over onto your abdomen. And we'll move into cobra, so feet together, chin or forehead on the mat, hands underneath the shoulders, elbows so close to the side. Take a breath in, hold the breath, peel the Front side off of the mat. And release the breath. So breathe normally here. It's almost like we're pushing our, trying to push our body away from our yoga mat. Hands are, are not pushing down as much as they're pushing both down and forward simultaneously. So you might feel some engagement in your shoulders here, engagement in the core. Keep the core engaged as you lift the chin up. Breathe. Three, two, one, and lower down with control. Release the arms and rest. Turn the head to one side. Okay, when you're ready, you can roll over onto your side, onto your back, and then re-center on your mat. Let's give the back a little bit of a stretch, so bringing the knees into the ribs and rocking gently left and right. And then when you're ready, go ahead and stretch your legs out again. Let's rest in Savasana. Okay, when you're ready, reach your arms over your head, engage your core, and let's lift the head, the trunk up, peel off, peel the back up off of the mat. And let's continue forward, both legs forward, continue your arms forward towards your toes. Bring your, toe, your fingers towards your toes or ankles, tuck the chin. Hachimottanasana, forward fold.
If you'd like to try a, a banda, a lock, then you can practice exhaling fully and then sucking in your abdomen without breathing in. Suck in your abdomen, draw your navel in and up. Exhale fully, then draw your navel in and up into your rib cage. You can hold that banda as long as you like, as long as you feel comfortable. Maybe doing it multiple times here. I find when I do that, it creates space in my low back. Okay, slowly lift the head, lift the torso up. Let's bring the left knee into the rib, step it over the right leg. Take hold of the right knee, I'm sorry, the left knee with the right hand, left hand behind the back. And a little gentle turning of the back. Lengthen the back up before attempting to turn. You want to twist from the abdomen, from the belly button up. So start this twist low, lengthen the spine up, and then coming around with the shoulders once the spine is upright, erect. Look behind you. And then coming forward. Let's change the legs. Try the other side. This is Ardha Matsyandrasana, the half spinal twist. So same thing with the other, other side. It helps to stimulate, this posture helps to stimulate your adrenal glands. So if you're finding yourself fatigued, it's a good posture to go into. Looking over the right shoulder. And back to center. Okay, for our inversion for the day, so downward dog. Downward dog, let's make our way onto all fours. Really spread your, spread your fingers apart. And really make some firm, uh, firmness in the shoulders. Curl the toes under. When you're ready, lift the knees up. Draw the heels down. And hold. Let's stay here for about a minute. Notice any changes in your breathing in this inversion.
Okay, transitioning here to uh, pigeon. So let's bring the right knee forward. Lift the trunk up, give your arms a little rest. Bring your hands to your sides maybe. Just working the hips a little bit. Bringing the right hip down. And rock a little bit left and right or forward and backward. Want to find some lengthening in the in that right hip, the outside of the right hip. And see if you can lift your torso up higher, maybe even getting a little bit of a back bend here. Okay, when you're ready, make your way back to downward dog. And let's try the other leg, left leg coming forward. All right, coming out of the pose, let's make our way to all fours. A little cat, stretch the back, slowly lower the tailbone, lower the chin, lift the back. And drawing the sits bones towards the heels, but not all the way down, maybe about halfway. And then all the way down to the heels. And from here, let's make our way onto our back for our final resting pose, Savasana. Roll the legs, roll the arms, or just stay still, either way.
and come to a still place here. Soften your legs and arms, your face. Rest easy. Dissolve all the tension throughout your body, using your mind. Letting go of thoughts, watching breath, soaking up any sense of ease. Okay, easing out of this deep relaxation, can begin to wiggle the fingers and toes, roll the legs and arms, stretch the arms out over the head, 
Roll to the left side and make your way up to seated when you're ready. You can stay on your back if you need to. Find a comfortable cross-legged posture. Have your eyes closed or open, hands on your knees or in your lap. Bringing back into focus your resolve. Remember what you can accomplish anything you want if you have that clear and strong resolve. So let's cultivate this as we end our class. What is it that you want? Feel your desire inside. Feel your strength welling up in your gut. And closing dedication, may all beings be safe, may all beings be well, may all beings be happy.